Check out this show and more great photography podcasts at photocastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Digital Photography Podcast Video Edition. In this episode, we're going to take another look at Lightroom, uh, but we're going to take a different sort of look at it. Everybody knows that Lightroom is a raw file processor, and if you shoot raw, you have a program like Lightroom or Aperture or Adobe Camera Raw that you use to process your raw files. But I think a lot of people that still shoot JPEG uh, overlook these programs because they just figure they're for uh, processing raw files. But here's an example of an event that I covered and I had to shoot a lot of pictures very fast and I didn't want to be changing cards all the time so I shot JPEG and some of the photos are real nice and some are not so nice and I've imported a few in here into Lightroom just to show you a photo that uh, I like the the action in the photo but I'm not terribly uh, happy with the quality of the photo so I want to show you what you can do with a JPEG file in Lightroom so first of all we'll go into the develop module because that's where you do all your work when you're developing an image and the first thing I want to do is just crop the image a little just for my own liking I want to lose that cone up there because I don't think I like it being there and I want to get the guy's helmet right on that one-third uh, the rule of thirds crossing line there I think it's a little better composition okay you can do that in any program so that's no big deal but what I do here on this picture first of all it's a little bright a little overexposed maybe so I'll turn the exposure down just a little bit and then I'll go over here to this blacks command and turn that up a little bit and what that does is as the name implies it just deepens the blacks a little bit and now that I've done those two uh, looks like a little bit of the bike is in a shadow so we'll throw in a little bit of fill light basically that lights up some of the darker areas and here's the interesting commands right here clarity vibrance and saturation they're a little difficult to explain except saturation that is like any other program saturation but I've found that if I bump this up right around 60 ish and bump this up right around 40 and then pump up the saturation a little bit it just makes the image pop a little more it's a, it's a its presence is increased hence the name presence here okay so we've done that um, let's go down here look at a few other things sharpening masking is a command that I use quite a bit if you hold down the alt key and slide the masking oops sorry let's see we have to be zoomed into 100 percent to see the effect hold down the alt key and slide the masking what you do is you slide this over until you're seeing just edges and you actually just about all the way over in this case is about what I want so what that means is I'm masking everything except the edges so I want to only sharpen the edges because back here in these rocks and things like that you don't want to be sharpening those and then this is the actual sharpening amount adjustment and this one you just kinda have to hold down the alt key also which gives you this sort of grayscale look and then slide it over until you get the look you want and in this case I'm gonna go real extreme and just go all the way over now if you look here at the word team while I'm doing this I'll go all the way back here it's real blurry and all the way here to the right it's very sharp okay that's pretty cool I like it that way let's see so now I've got the before and after screens on here you can see the image on the right the colors pop a little more the background isn't so washed out the blacks are blacker just generally a better crisper picture still not you know a perfect picture but I think it's a, a lot better than it was before and here we can see again the before and after sides so if you play around in the in the develop module with a JPEG file, you find that there's a lot you can do with the file, and of course you can get into uh, you know the tone the tone curve and play around with that and everything. And also there's a 
all the different color channels you can change the hue saturation and luminance like for instance the blues so you can the blues get a lot darker blues get a lot lighter same thing let's look at the red on his helmet and the red down here on the track turn the luminance way up luminance way down see so there's a lot you can do to fine-tune your images even if they're not raw files so if you don't shoot raw and you don't plan on shooting raw anytime in the near future but still want an application that will let you really uh, fine-tune your images you might want to look at Lightroom and some of the other programs like Lightroom such as Aperture and uh, other uh, what would normally be considered uh, raw processors most all of them also accommodate JPEGs and other files like TIFFs and things like that and uh, you might find that there's a lot you can do with your files and then if you ever do start shooting raw you'll already be into the workflow and it'll be no problem just to continue on with what you're doing one thing I want to point out just before I leave here let's say I shot a whole bunch of pictures this day and they all looked the way this one looked when I first started and I want to process them all this way what I can do now is I can go over here to my presets and I can add a preset based on all of the changes I just made to this and call it Allen's motor cycle picks now I've created a preset over here and now I can click on this image over here and then click on that preset and it will automatically apply all of those settings to that picture as well and there and let's look at this one so once you go through all the work to create a preset uh, to create uh, all the settings that you for a batch of pictures you can save it as a preset and there you can see that picture just got a lot better you can save it as a user preset and use it over and over and over again so that's it for today just a quick look at Lightroom again and how it can benefit JPEG shooters until next time keep on shooting